What's up, everybody? Um, episode five of Time Crunch. I'm here joined with Chris McClellan. Chris is the marketing director as of about three months ago for Torch and Crown. Torch and Crown is the only brewery in Manhattan in New York City right now. And um, before Chris joined Torch and Crown, he spent five years working on a marketing team with Guinness uh, with a big focus on education. Uh, Chris is also a very interesting character in the beer world because he runs a storytelling platform called The Brew Enthusiast. And, um, you know, he does storytelling and he is available for hire for breweries to help them with their digital footprint, uh, helping with their voice and other business related strategies. Um, under normal circumstances, there's a, a lot of other things I would have picked to choose to talk to Chris about working in New York City at the first ever uh, brewery in Manhattan. But um, instead, uh, what's caught my eye is the fact that um, they have quickly adapted and joined many of the um, what many of the other breweries in the country are doing right now, which is delivering direct to cons uh, direct to consumers. So. Um, you know, this, especially in New York City, where I, I couldn't imagine ever parking a car uh, and how you even do that, uh, I was excited to touch base with Chris and, and learn, first of all, um, can you explain to us just kind of like the thought process from when this became an option to uh, knocking on the door of that first customer? Yeah, it's a great, thanks for having me on too, Doug. No um, problem. It's a good story. Uh, it's a harrowing story, but you know, the best stories are the ones that you have to live through, right? So um, we, it was a little under two weeks ago, we're about to kind of celebrate our, our two week anniversary of delivery here in, here in New York City. And um, we had a bit of a, you know, a, a, a emergency production meeting and management meeting at Torch and Crown. Uh, and two weeks ago, the environment was very different in New York than it is now even, you know, um, kind of night and day in terms of the level of urgency around uh, coronavirus, the amount of lockdown that's happening, um, and just the just the vibe of the city. And so we kind of looked at what was going to happen to our retail customers, what was going to happen to our contract business. So Torch and Crown also runs, <clears throat> excuse me, a very uh, healthy contract business for a lot of other partners here, uh, here in New York. So we have one of the largest, if not the largest production brewery in the city right now. We brew at our facility that we own in the Bronx. Uh, and we, then we will have our 10 barrel facility down in Manhattan as well. So we'll have both locations eventually. Uh, and we do quite a few other brands up in the Bronx. And so uh, the kind of slackening of, of that pipeline, you know, due to the lack of demand and, and people kind of shutting themselves in uh, as they should, <laughs> the, that coupled with, uh, you know, the shrinking of our retail business and the customers that uh, would normally be buying from us on a week in, week out basis made us uh, very quickly realized that we needed to figure out a way to get to consumers very quickly. Now, the background of this is that Torch and Crown, uh, within the plan, you know, years down the line, once we had kind of really established ourselves and gotten the Soho Brewery and Restaurant actually off the ground and kind of worked through those kinks a little bit, the background would have been for us to eventually uh, launch a large direct-to-consumer business. We have uh, we have a vision for you know what the future of this could look like, both for uh, you know, beer here in New York and, and beer across the country. Um, and so that was part of the plan. And we had a meeting and we said, how are we going to get beer to customers and how can we continue to be successful as a startup in what is going to be probably the most challenging business environment we're ever going to run into, you know, for the next few months. A lot of small businesses are losing employees. They're laying people off. Cash flow has completely stopped. Um, I know Revolution is, is doing as much as they possibly can. Uh, to hold on to everybody and so is everyone else and so we're fighting as hard as we can to continue to try to stay afloat support our team as much as we can here in new york um stay safe obviously while doing it and uh and you know kind of keep the train moving down the track so all that being said we had a meeting on friday um and this was the friday almost two weeks ago and said okay so we planned about a year to launch our direct-to-consumer business do you think we can do it uh, and this was a direct quote to me from our co-founder, John Dantzler. Uh, do you think we can do this in the next 48 hours? And I said, well, we can give it a swing. Uh, so we basically spent the next, myself and the team spent the next, you know, 48 to, I would say 60 to 72 hours, uh, not really sleeping and kind of stress testing a new direct to consumer ordering platform, fulfillment platform. 
um, just working through all the, you know, what, what does a consumer need? How can we make this journey easy for them? And then how do we actually get the beer to their door? And we did the whole thing in about two and a half days. Launched uh, Torch and Crown delivery on Tuesday morning. Uh, and within the day, I had fulfilled almost 50 orders, uh, which we were incredibly proud of. So uh, since then, we have uh, become somewhat of a, I would say, somewhat experts on, on uh, order fulfillment and distribution. Not something that I thought I could put on my resume this quickly, but uh, something that I'm incredibly proud of. We've actually filled over 550 orders now in the city. Uh, since we launched, and uh, we're excited. We, we've just opened up Brooklyn a few days ago, about a week ago, actually, and we're looking to open up parts of Queens. Uh, New York City is obviously enormous, so if you open up the whole city, you end up driving around for a long time. There's not a lot of people or cars on the road right now, which makes it a lot easier, uh, but at the same time, you know, you do have to get from neighborhood to neighborhood and borough to borough, so there are a lot of considerations there, but all that being said, it took, it took a very short amount of time, and we've had, uh, you know, remarkable success considering what we did. So, so in New York, it sounds like you were, this was something legally that you were all, always allowed to do. It was just something you were planning on getting to. Like I, I know in Illinois, uh, some quick quick laws exceptions were put into place to allow this. This is something that you didn't have to wait for any legislation. You were able to, you could have done this at any point. It was very timely legislation. The same thing happened in New York. Okay. So we, we, there was a loosening of the state liquor authorities laws which allowed us to um, really harness this, this direct to consumer model efficiently mm -hmm. um, and really get ourselves out there. Okay, and then, and then you guys have been self-distributing as well, is that correct? So did you have like the company vans and all that already actually, in place? There? We've been scrapping our way from the beginning, um, you know, trying to run as lean as possible, which means that we are using our cars, whoever okay. owns the car. So we're just hopping in and throwing beer into, uh, into wherever we can find room. Got it. Yeah, one, one thing I found uh, interesting and nice was that uh, through talking to our insurance broker, um, uh, pretty much all the major insurance companies are very much loosening up their stance on this. And, you know, any brewery who, you know, if they have the, the co coverage for some level of drivers already, they will get them on, get them, co get all the drivers who are all these newly converted uh, people who are becoming delivery drivers who didn't used to do anything where they would operate a, a company vehicle or a vehicle on behalf of the company, they're willing to get them under coverage and make sure that if something happened, you know, the company would be safe and the individual would be taken care of. So there, that was one thing I was surprised at how before I even, like at the time I even asked about it, they had already kind of worked in exceptions into place. So uh, for anybody thinking about doing that, I uh, highly recommend making the phone call. It's not necessarily going to cost you much of anything, if anything at all, yep. but you can make sure that, uh, you know, all your drivers pass a quick, uh, quick test uh, in terms of uh, their history, and then uh, they'll be all set under your insurance. So that was nice. Um, so in terms of your, like, ordering platform, was that, like, a whole new animal to add? Like, you, you didn't just it wasn't as simple as like adding it to your website where you could order a t-shirt or something like that. Did you have to take in a lot of new stuff or was it pretty much the same idea? It was, it was a similar idea. So yeah, that's, what, I, that's what we're doing too. I'm not judging. We, oh, you, no, can order, I know. you can order our beer to go uh, the same way that you would order a, a tap handle or a stickers. A hundred percent. So, so the basic, I, I have a background in web design and development. And so um, I actually built our, our current website at torchandcrown.com. And I have, you know, we have this grand vision of, uh, you know, iterating on a product and really having a bespoke um, version of this down the line that really accomplishes exactly what we want. So it does everything, it, you know, provides a great customer experience and then um, also helps us do the, the back end work required to get the beer to the door. Uh, that we didn't have the luxury for any of that stuff. So uh, we actually built our website or I built our website on Squarespace's platform, which actually has a very robust commerce platform uh, attached to it, which is really very convenient uh, in terms of inventory management, order fulfillment, um, customer communication. You know, you've placed an order, you've fulfilled an order, customers get that, those notifications very, very quickly. So all that being said, it allowed us to be relatively scrappy and quick with the way that we chose to architect the system. It still needs to be stress tested hilariously um, because you know, one bad email, one miscommunication, one sentence that doesn't make any sense and you lose somebody. You know? yeah. So um, it takes a long time to build something to, to, to perfection and we've kind of uh, iterated very, very quickly on that. But it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't necessarily overly difficult for me to kind of think through that and architect that. 
Uh, and then since then, we've just gotten a lot of good feedback from people, both internal and external, on, on things they'd like to see to make the, uh, the experience a little bit better. Gotcha. Um, from, a, from the customer standpoint, what type of flexibility do they have to give you in terms of, you know, the, the window of when it'll show up and how long it takes? What's, what's that like just from them knowing, like, not that people are really going a lot of places, but just making sure that they're going to be home and not out for a walk? How does that work? Well, uh, yeah, it's a great question. So we had the luxury and, uh, I guess, challenge of not only being one of the first breweries uh, that I saw actually across the country, especially here in the eastern, the northeast, to really very quickly launch this direct-to-consumer model. Um, but most consumers don't have any experience ordering beer directly from a brewery and having it being delivered to them, right? Yeah. They go to their bottle shop or they do that kind of thing. And so this is a novelty for a lot of people. Uh, it makes a ton of sense in a lot of ways because you, <clears throat> you know, the beer that we might have, you know, canned two two hours before now gets to your door, you know, so right. it's incredibly fresh, uh, and we can kind of eliminate a lot of the the middlemen in in in, in some circumstances. Obviously, we want to support our retailers out there as much as possible, um, but you know, for the current business environment, it makes sense. So all that being said, we kind of winged it when we said, well, what kind of windows do we want to serve in? You know, and we just said one to five and five to nine. Uh, my entire team, the sales team and marketing team at Torch and Crown, including the co-founders and basically everybody who is in on quarantine at the brewery right now, <coughs> um, has been working 10 to 12 hour days uh, for the past two weeks to try to be flexible, right? Somebody has to go make this round of deliveries. You need to go hit 20 spots. You know, somebody hop in a car and get it done. And so everybody has kind of taken up the lead. Some people have taken up the lead on dispatching. Some people have taken up the lead on um, just kind of making sure that we're organized and shipping inventory down from the Bronx. Uh, we're kind of fulfilling out of our downtown location, which is a complete construction zone, but it does allow us a more centralized location to fulfill the beer um, from lower Manhattan. And so all of that being said, we've kind of improved the windows a little bit. Uh, we are we are delivering seven days a week right now to customers, and and on weekends we do just have one window between three and seven. But as long as you order by two thirty, you can get your beer by happy hour most of the time. Wow. Impressive, yeah. thank you. Um, so if somebody happens to not answer the door, can you just leave it, or do you have to come back another time? Or if it we haven't actually really, we've only run into this once, luckily, because everyone's Good. home. Yeah. Um, of five hundred and fifty plus orders at this point, but. Uh, we have run into that once, but otherwise, yeah, we just, you know, the, the, the system takes in their phone number. We call them about five minutes ahead of the next stop and we say, hey, please, please meet us downstairs. We can't come into your apartment building at this point. Um, our sanitation practices are unbelievably strict from start to finish. So whenever anyone is handling beer, we have gloves on. We also have, uh, as you know, breweries are incredibly sanitary environments anyway. Um, they, they have to be in order to be successful. And so start to finish, um, we're using, you know, isopropyl alcohol on ourselves before and after each delivery. Uh, we are making sure that we place the beer down and then walk away and then watch them pick it up. Uh, we do get a chance to check IDs. They can put it down and we can check it really quick. So there's a whole process that we've kind of, you know, worked through to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're checking all the boxes on our end and we're being incredibly safe. So yeah. most people, it hasn't been a problem. And I love the reaction on people's faces when somebody shows up who works for Torch and Crown and says, you know, thank you for supporting our local business. Uh, it, and it really yeah. does. It means the world to us that, you know, folks have supported us this far. Yeah, I've had two two deliveries so far and both times I was you know, fogging up the window like a puppy uh, yeah. waiting. And I actually videotaped both of them and then talked to the people and uh, did it as a way to kind of turn around and promote what they're doing and encouraging people to, you know, continue spreading the love to their to their favorite breweries. Um, but that's cool about, um, you know, all the precautions you're doing, you know, going above and beyond. And I feel like we've come a long way just in the last two weeks, whereas at first it felt like, um, this awkwardness of like, oh, I don't want this person to come too close to me. And now it's at the point where they don't want to come too close to you either. It's very yeah. much a mutual, like, we're, yeah. we're good here. You know, I'm going to drop this and no need to shake hands, no need to anything, just a long distance wave and both sides, that's what both sides want. You know, it was in those first few days, it wasn't, it was like a little, eh. but now I feel like everybody's comfortable. Like, we don't need to go anywhere near each other. Here in New York, it's especially <laughs> relevant because, uh, you know, if you're a New Yorker, you know, I've spent almost six years living in this city now and I didn't grow up here, but uh, I've been here long enough to take a little bit of mental ownership. But if you're a New Yorker, uh, you you require people around you at some point. You know, it's it's part of the the, the vibe and the joy of the city is is just the, 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 the throbbing energy that comes with so many people and so many uh 
different opinions flying around and, and so many people thinking so many different things. So uh, it's especially odd here uh, when people aren't allowed near each other. You know, it's yeah. especially weird because you don't come to New York not to be near other people, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the, the you, you know, we, we talked about how you've been a self-distributing brewery. So I'm sure some of the people doing uh, deliveries are people that are used to driving beer around, but more so to bottle shops mm -hmm. um, and other retailers. Uh, what are some of the, the jobs, previous jobs at the brewery of people who are, who are now doing deliveries that were never kind of behind the wheel before? The, the good thing is, is that, you know, having come from a very structured environment at Guinness, which is obviously a very large company, um, it, it both prepared me very well and I was very ill prepared for the incredible uh, flexibility needed for the, you know, for the hardcore startup environment at Torch and yeah. Crown. Um, but luckily most people were doing most jobs. So Got everybody it. who was on board, you know, you put them in and you say, hey, this is how you deliver beer. You have to drop the invoice and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah I know, I know. I, I do this once a week you know, on yep. top of my, you know, my cellarman duties over here. And also I, you know, I stack kegs over there and I do a little bit of accounting for us too on Tuesdays, you know? So yep. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where everybody has been um, unbelievably willing to, you know, just kind of pitch in and, and get it done. And so on any one day, one of us is, you know, monitoring our, our, our social traffic and, you know, actually doing some marketing, which I'll, I'll get to at some point here. Yep. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, we can just kind of all, just grab, grab the wheel and, and get going. That's a good segue because one of the things I was going to kind of close down with is, um, you know, how do you look at, you know, I, I think you and I probably both agree that this, this is going to go on for a, a good while longer. This isn't ending in a few weeks. Um, the, the restrictions that we're under, it's, it could be a matter of, you know, months more. Um, in terms of this delivery business, do you, you know, do you feel it was a novelty and so it spiked and then it'll just kind of trickle down? Or do you feel like there's, you know, the, a, a more positive way to look at it? You know, if you think it's realistic is that, you know, there's millions of people who haven't this, the idea of this hasn't even gotten to them yet. So it's just a matter of, you know, how do you get the word out there to all the people beyond maybe your most hardcore customers that, hey, you know, the only craft brewery in Manhattan will deliver beer right to your door. I can't even imagine how many people don't realize that's even an option right now. So then is it, does this have potential to go way beyond just some quick, you know, quick burst from it being a new thing? You know, how are, how are you thinking about it or looking at it right now? Yeah, the, the novelty has certainly fueled, I think, the first week and a half to two weeks to a certain extent. But um, I'm definitely a glass half full guy. We, I have to be right now. Um, yep. I want this to be desperately want this to be successful, both for our yep. business and for a lot of the other breweries here in New York city that have started delivering, um, very successfully as well to the, to their local customers. Uh, the fact that we do have an advantage, the fact that we really are kind of owning the mind space and the mind share in Manhattan, which is not something that anyone else has really done. Uh, I think that will become an advantage as we move along, but there are so many great breweries here in the city in Brooklyn and Queens in the Bronx and Staten Island, all of whom are <clears throat> doing delivery successfully now um, because they see that as a, as a great route to market. Um, and I think my hope is, is that, you know, we, we do have to kind of ride that wave out a little bit until customers actually see that as an option. You know, we, we are the first ones through the wall here. So it, uh, it definitely is a little bit, it can, you know, you can, you can get a few teeth knocked out before you, uh, you know, you get back up and figure out what you actually need to do. Uh, but my hope is that people see the value here. Um, my hope is that people continue to support local businesses, uh, whether it's Torch and Crown or, or really anyone else in the city and across the country, because um, the struggle is real. You know, um, when you see somebody who's, you know, worked their tail off for two years, just walk away from a job. Um, it's the worst, you know, so yeah. we're, we're, I'm hoping it's not a novelty. We're doing our best to get the word out there and do as much marketing as we can without getting too close to anybody. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of my take. Gotcha. Is, is the, um, is it feasible with the cars and, you know, it just, I've, I've been to New York five or six times, never for more than two days. And I'm just always overwhelmed by cars, lack of parking. Like, is it, is it, does it work because you can just leave your flashers on somewhere and just be back and forth? Like would, 
would would this work under normal circumstances with like the feasibility of how do you like are you going up to like the 40th floor of a, an apartment building or are they always coming yeah. down to like the lobby to meet you so it's pretty quick no it's a great question too so we're, we're not going into buildings anymore for safety and sanitary purposes so uh, customers do have to meet us but we'll call them ahead of time and they usually have no problem just coming outside and we can just kind of put the beer in the ground and that's great uh and and walk away so it's nice and easy i will say that the uh the scarcity of people right now in the city and the lack of traffic is both unbelievably unnerving and also makes driving around the city very very quick um yeah. so it it does make it a lot easier to make a series of deliveries very quickly both in Manhattan, in Brooklyn, wherever you happen to be, because you can get, you know, from one borough to the next in three minutes um, versus 35 minutes. So it does change a lot of things. But we, uh, for the most part, people have been pretty, pretty positive about it. And then it, you know, logistically, it hasn't been too difficult yet. But as soon as, you know, as soon as we get past this, uh, I think we are going to run into some challenges. Gotcha. All right, Chris. Well, this was uh, very fascinating. I appreciate it. Um, ready to uh, play the game time crunch? I think I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So I'm gonna throw two minutes. I'm adding 10 seconds for Zoom for to compensate <laughs> for the little delay. So we got two minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Rapid fire. Um, you cannot ask any follow-up questions, but you can pass or you could ask me to repeat one. Um, so just do your best to, to give an answer and get as many uh, get as many out as you can. You ready? I'm ready. All right, so the clock will start when I finish the first question. So I made the first question be the longest. All right, here we go. Where were you when you drank the most memorable pint of Guinness that you've ever had? Okay, so I was, it was actually my- the Short answer. First pint of Guinness, and it was, I was in Springfield, Massachusetts, and I was uh, maybe 21, maybe not, but uh, I have a very distinct memory attached to that. All right. What style of beer gets you most excited when found on cask? Oh my God. Uh, mild, any kind of mild. Okay. Name a U.S. brewery's aesthetic that you geek out over. Right now, um, I really, really, really like um, Fort Point and Fieldwork. Both of those guys out in California, I love their brand and design. Okay. What out-of-state brewery are you most likely to trek to? I would say from here, it's going to be Jack's Abbey right now. Favorite Irish pub in New York? My favorite Irish pub is a bar called Swift Hibernian Lounge on East 4th Street. Describe the Torch and Crown brand's look and feel in one word. Ambitious. What's the best U.S. city to do a beer vacation in? Burlington, Vermont. I agree. Name an under the radar place to have a beer in Brooklyn. Uh, you have to go to Iona in Williamsburg. Amazing yeah. pint. What part of the beer industry are you most keen on learning more about? I think it's both the brewing and the operational nature of it. So the accounting and finance side and the brewing side. Okay. Name a style that Torch and Crown has never brewed that you'd like to see happen. I would desperately like to see us make an all beer. If you were to give a TED talk, what would it be on? <laughs> Failure. What beer writer do you look up to most? Um, probably right now, one of my favorites has got to be Jeff Allworth. What's the first word that comes to mind when I say Bud Light Seltzer? Kitschy. What most creative thing you've done to entertain your son during the lockdown? Uh, we, We're out of time, but I'll let you uh, answer anyway. We uh, have been playing a lot of guitar together. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. How's he doing with it? He loves it. He thinks it's hilarious. He's 14 months old. So he's like standing up and wobbling his way over. And then he just like whacks the guitar as hard as he can. And he just thinks it's the funniest thing on earth. So very cool. Well, Chris, thanks so much. This was a lot of fun. Uh, fascinating topic. And uh, could you uh, let everyone know a couple of things, um, how to order Torch and Crown beer, if you could uh, give them the website, and then also how to how to find you on Twitter, Instagram, your website. For stuff. sure. So uh, thanks again for inviting me on, Doug. This is awesome. No um, 
You can order Torch and Crown delivery seven days a week. If you go to torchandcrown.com forward slash delivery, all of our beers will be there. Uh, you can just throw those in your basket and then you'll get a confirmation email. And as long as you order, you know, by a certain, uh, a certain time during the day, which you'll see there during the ordering process, you should get beer the same day, delivered the same day, which is great. Uh, and you can find me, uh, my persona online is the Brew Enthusiast. So you can find me at Brew Enthusiast on Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Very cool. All right, Chris, thanks again. See you next time, everybody. All right, thanks. Thank <laughs> you.